Hi, I'm Carl Taylor from visualeducation.com and in this video we're going to be reviewing the new ISO 4K 27 inch monitor, the 2700X. We're going to be putting it through its paces in tethered shooting in the studio, for retouching and for video editing. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Use coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. So this is it. This is the new ISO 27 inch 4K self calibrating monitor called the 2700X. Now I've been waiting for ISO to release a monitor like this for some time now. I have the 31 inch 4K monitor which is an astonishingly good monitor and um, the 27 inch 4K was something that was kind of missing in their lineup. I've got a 27 inch 2.5K resolution that I was using in the studio and um, it was fantastic to see them bring out a 4K monitor in the 27 inch size. Now we put the monitor through its paces in various departments in our business, in retouching, uh, video and in tethered shooting. Let's take a look at some of those tests and then I'll come back to you with my full review. So I've got both screens here in a, my retouching environment. This is my normal screen, my ISO 31 inch 4K, beautiful monitor, been using it for a few years now, absolutely stunning detail. This is the new uh, 27 inch, the 2700X color edge um, and it's incredible. I was using this for shooting last week, tethered, and now I've brought it into my retouching environment to see what it's like compared to my existing monitor. I've color calibrated this one to my M1 MacBook Pro and I've used another M1 MacBook Pro the same just to be sure and color calibrated that one into that one because what I'm seeing is I'm seeing this one being slightly more neutral than my 31 inch which is looking a little bit magenta, hardly anything. One looks a tiny bit greener, one looks a tiny bit more magenta. But having checked under a high quality daylight balanced um, eye footage light with a photographic um, x right grey card and colour checker passport, I've got to say that the neutral greys are actually more accurate to this monitor than this. So this one um, I would say is running a tiny, tiny little bit more magenta. So I'm actually happier with the colour uh, that I'm seeing on the 2700. It's also a newer monitor, um, better options on HDR. Um, and I think from a detail point of view, that's where it's crucial for me. Let's take a look at that. We're looking at this unretouched image here at the moment that I shot last week and um, they're both at 50% on each uh, monitor at the moment. Uh, but if I zoom in and we take a look at the detail, we're into 200% there. Let me go back to 100% on there and let me go to 100% on this one. So that's 100% on each monitor. Now what's really interesting to me from a retouching point of view is that this has got a finer pitch. So the pixels, there's more pixels, if you like, uh, per inch um, than there is on this monitor. So the actual resolution pitch of this as a 4K uh, gives a sharper image in a, in a given area. And that is just noticeable. We can just see that that is slightly crisper, slightly sharper, because it's taking that full, full, full K image and it's fitting it into a slightly smaller space than the 31 inches. So therefore that resolution and detail is there. And I've always thought this monitor was incredible with its detail, but this is actually surpassing it and um, it's, it's just, just beautiful. It's just divine, uh, to be honest. I'm so, so happy with this monitor from a retouching perspective. Now, I'm sure the video guys, the video department are actually gonna prefer this monitor because they can fit more panels in Premiere and After Effects on this. But from a retouching point of view, this, is all I need because you know I just need to deal with one image and sometimes the footprint of the 31 inch monitor on my desk is a bit big. 
So um, I'm actually pretty sure already that this is going to be my preferred monitor for retouching here in my office on my desk and that um, eventually I'll pass this monitor down to our video department. Now if we look at the detail a little bit further, I'm not sure you're going to be able to pick it up on camera, but if I go in to say 200% on this monitor and 200% on this monitor. Um, there, there are very small things I'm picking out, just about extra little shadow detail that I can't see as clearly in here, but I can see just a little bit better definition in here. And then other small things, there's a very small line on the model's eye just here, and it's more apparent on this monitor than it is on this one. And that is, again, probably down to the fact that that monitor being slightly smaller. And from a size point of view, it's, it doesn't seem like a huge change to me. Although, having measured it out, this monitor is about that much wider than this one, but only about that much higher. So the majority of the extra real estate, if you like, on this monitor is coming from uh, the width there. Uh, as opposed to the height, but general impressions of it are that that, as a 27-inch monitor, is plenty sufficient space for me for when I do my retouching work or when I'm shooting tethered in the studio. I don't really feel the need for any more space. Sometimes when I'm looking at this monitor, you almost feel like you're, you're looking across from one side to the other because it's such a big area. And as I said, I think that's going to be far better uh, maybe for the video guys downstairs to be using this monitor where they've got lots of panels and, and you know, the extra space uh, is, is better for them. So, so far, um, absolutely stunning on this Color Edge ISO uh, CG uh, 2700X. Going to put it through its paces some more and I'll give you my final uh, review once we've tested it throughout the departments of our company. Now let's have a look at this monitor on a photo shoot. So here you can see I'm using the new 2700X on a photo shoot uh, in a variety of different situations shooting these models and the monitor performed flawlessly. I mean the color absolutely perfect, the self-calibration so easy to use, but the incredible amount of detail um, that was able to resolve. I'm shooting with a 100 megapixel Hasselblad camera, uh, some of the best detail you can get from any camera, and I can really reveal that detail on this screen with my tethered shooting. So my images are coming through live as I'm shooting. I can check that in the raw software, see every minute detail, which gives me that really great flexibility and control over my lighting and making sure that my focus is pin sharp. So um, in the tethered shooting environment in the studio, it was absolutely fantastic. So, so far so good on retouching and in a tethered shooting environment in my studio, but I also wanted to see how the video guys got on with the monitor, so I passed it to Ben, head of video, in the video department. So Carl has just given me the new ISO 4K monitor to test for video, and I've been using it against the 2.5K ISO monitor and the BenQ 4K monitor. And I have to say, there's definitely a lot more like bite and contrast and saturation. This has just got a little bit extra finer detail. This is just a still frame from video compared to this. It, this just looks, this has been fully calibrated, which a classic without the self calibrating monitor like these both have was just a nightmare having to, you know, update the softwares, download the drivers, bring the thing down and let that run. Unlike these, which auto does it. But yeah, so I, I've, I fully calibrated it to the best I could get it. And it just, yeah, it just looks a little bit more washed out than the others. There's a tiny bit less sharpness, tiny, tiny bit less contrast, tiny bit less saturation. And also there's definitely not quite as much detail in, in the shadows. I play a bit of this when it, when it comes sharp in the shadows. There's definitely just a little bit less detail than you get in this, this, the color for these two compared is actually really good. 
It's just this is just has that that sharpness, you know, that 4K sharper edge than the 2.5K monitor. The only thing that would persuade me not to use this is just the size. Obviously, I've got them all full screen there, so you can see. Um, but when I when I'm actually working, it's going to be like this. Yeah, obviously, I need I can't have the just the the um, program window full screen like you can if you're at retouching in Photoshop. I need all the panels. I need the the timeline and the project window and the source window. So I think what I'm going to do is steal Carl's 31 inch 4K ISO monitor from upstairs because he'll be happy to work on the 27 inch that's got a bit more sharpness and detail, whereas I need the bigger screen for the extra panels in Premiere. So you can see the monitor performed well in all departments, retouching, shooting in the studio and in video. I'm so impressed with this monitor that this is now going to be my main monitor in my office for retouching. As you can see, Ben was pretty keen to get hold of my 31 inch monitor um, so that he can use that extra space on the screen for his uh, Premiere video editing. Right, let's take a look at some of the specs on the monitor and the pricing. Well, um, first of all, it's an IPS panel. That's the type of monitor. The interesting thing about this monitor is what I call the pitch or the pixels per inch. This monitor is sharper than the 31 inch because it has a greater number of pixels per inch. This monitor runs at 164 pixels per inch compared to the 31 inch 4K monitor that runs at 149 pixels per inch. Now, why is that? Well, it's basically down to the amount of pixels in a given space. The 31 inch monitor is probably about that much wider than this particular monitor and only about that much higher, but it is still the same resolution. So the amount of pixels per inch to fill that space becomes different, which means this monitor actually results in a slightly sharper image, that finer tuned pixels of 164 uh, pixels per inch. Now, like its big brother, the 31 inch monitor, this is also self calibrating. So easy, you don't need to worry about calibrating with a separate calibrator. You don't have to concern yourselves with forgetting to calibrate it. You pre-program the monitor to execute its calibration whenever you designate it to do so. The default is every 200 hours, which is about standard. And as long as the monitor is switched on, whether you're there or not, it will execute a calibration, meaning it will keep its color and tone perfectly adjusted, calibrated all the time. And for me, that is a huge plus. Calibrating monitors with a calibrating tool that you have to then feed and stick to the screen and run the software, it actually becomes a bit of a pain and sometimes you forget to do it, you don't keep up to date with it, so self-calibrating just takes all the hassle out of it. Um, in terms of connectivity and ports, um, we've got the USB-C, which I've got connected to my MacBook Pro. Nice, easy, straightforward connection. We've got HDMI, we've got HDCP, and we've got a bunch of USB ports as well. It's even got an Ethernet connection port uh, or the LAN port that's also called. Um, one of the other fantastic things about the USB-C port for connecting straight to your uh, computer is that it's actually a powered port. So you don't even need to have your MacBook Pro on its normal charger. The screen will charge your MacBook Pro as well as acting as the display port. We've got a 1450 to one contrast ratio and up to 500 candela per meter square uh, luminance, um, which well above what I use, I, I normally run my monitors at around 140. Now, a lot of people run them less in a darker environment, uh, but because sometimes I'm shooting in a big bright one, white studio, uh, 140 um, I find works best for me. The monitor also has HDR gamut support, um, which is a, a new addition on the 27 inch size. 99% of the Adobe RGB gamut covered, 98% uh, of DCI-P3 covered, and uh, support for broadcast BT2020 as well. Now, the menu system is very easy to operate and control as well. Let's take a look at that. If we start on the left, we've got um, your decisions on which display port um, you wanna come in on. I'll just uh, tick that. Uh, on the next one, we have the um, 
profiles that you can select down here. So we're on user number one at the moment because that's the profile that the monitor has uh, operated its self calibration to. But you can see the other ones um, in the list as well there. And that one closes the menu system. If we go over to here, uh, we have some zoom features as well that you can use to zoom in on the screen with the F1s, F2. Uh, we go into the main menu. We have the signal information that's coming in. Um, and then if we go back to that again, then uh, color settings. So it can show you the color mode that you're in, brightness settings that you can uh, adopt manually. We can go into the advanced settings. And there you can adjust uh, a few extra features on hue saturation um, as well. And then if we come back out of there, and let's go back out of there. Now the self calibration is in this part as well. You just click tick on that and I can say execute a self calibration. If I click execute, then the um, calibrator device will flip down and it will start a calibration process as it's there. The calibration process will run through um, its usual procedures of bringing up various colors and tonal values, neutrals, whites, black, etc. Um, as it's doing here. And then when it's finished the calibration process, it will save that calibrated profile um, for your computer to read. Um, further down the menu, we have information just on the screen, aspect ratio, all that nonsense in there. Um, preferences, I don't know what that is. Okay, so the, the rotation, because you can use this monitor rotated vertical as well. Uh, the beep settings on your menu input, that sort of nonsense. Languages and then some general information. But overall, the, um, the monitor is very easy. The menu system is very easy to access and to use. But to be honest, once you've run that calibration process, then um, it's literally fire and forget. Uh, you just carry on using the monitor, plug it into your computer and off you go. And the detail on this monitor, absolutely incredible. So let's just take a look. I mean, these were shot on a very high resolution camera, but this is where you can really benefit from that high detail with the 4K combination here. Um, so obviously from a very high resolution camera, I can then benefit seeing that huge amount of detail via this 4K monitor, which has got such a great um, pixel per inch pitch of 164 pixels uh, for every inch laid down on the monitor, which just gives you this ultra crisp bite sharp images, which are fantastic. So a fantastically easy to use menu system um, and the self calibration process is a dream. Now, other things that I love about this monitor um, is actually the size. I prefer the 27 inch size to the 31. Let me tell you why. Um, for me, for my work, mostly shooting or retouching, the 27 inch monitor is easier to look at. The 31 inch, you kind of got to gaze across from one side to the other. And I don't really need a monitor as large as 31 inch. The other thing that's really interesting about the size is quite often I need to take my monitor home because I might decide I want to work from uh, home at the weekend, finish off some retouching, etc. And physically carrying and loading the 31 inch monitor into my car, um, it's a big piece of kit. This is a lot easier to use and a lot easier to handle. It's actually got quite a nice grip handle on the back of the monitor. As well as the grip handle, it's actually got a really nice easy to attach magnetic hood which is uh, a lot easier to attach than some of the previous hood designs on the ISO. So that's uh, a really nice touch as well. Uh, the other great thing with this monitor comes with a five year warranty. Um, so five year warranty from date of purchase, fantastic. Pricing wise, now I know you're all gonna be interested in the pricing. This monitor actually comes in relatively competitive for an ISO. It's still more expensive than some of the other monitors we've reviewed. You may have seen that we've reviewed in the past uh, the Asus ProArt monitor and the BenQ monitors, which are good monitors, but they're not as good as this and they don't have the self calibration. Price wise though, we're looking around about 2,500, 2,400 
for this 27 inch 4K monitor. But compared to the 31 inch, my 31 inch monitor, uh, which is the older model now, it was the CG318. I've had that several years. That cost me about 4,500 pounds. The new replacement uh, for the CG318 is the CG319X. That monitor, I think, is running at around about 3,700 pounds. So this is obviously a thousand pounds and more cheaper than the 31 inch for not a huge reduction in size, plus a gain in actual pixels per inch sharpness. Now, if we compare that to some of the other monitors that you might want to use for uh, photography or retouching, etc., the Asus ProArt that we reviewed some time ago uh, comes in at around about 1,600 pounds. So yes, it's a thousand pounds or 900 pounds less than this monitor, but it isn't as good. Um, it is not going to have the lifespan of the ISO and it is not as color accurate as the ISO. In all of those tests that we've done on the previous uh, monitors, such as the Asus and the BenQ SW321C, uh, we compared it against the ISO. And although they were good monitors for the price, they were never as good as the ISO. And now we have an ISO 27 inch in 4K that kind of surpasses everything in my opinion. Um, so this really is a fantastic piece of kit. The BenQ, by the way, I think came in at around 1,800 pounds. Uh, and again, comparing that to this monitor for 2,400 pound, although the BenQ admittedly was the 31 inch. So in summing up, I think this 27 inch 4K monitor is one of the best monitors I've used. I also think it's very well priced for what it delivers, especially when you compare it to the 31 inch ISO. As I said, this is now going to be my choice of monitor for most of my work. Now, while we're on the subject of ISO, just to close this out, many of you will already be furiously commenting on my pronunciation of the word ISO. Yes, I know it's Japanese and they pronounce it ASO, and I believe it means image. I've been pronouncing it ISO for so long, I'm afraid I can't change that habit. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Carl to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.